Welcome to Monday. It's May 12th. It's 2025, your day weather podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Feel the energy of Converse County. Explore Douglas's Railroad Heritage, Ayers Natural Bridge, and the Jackalope Legend. Glen Rock Bow Scenic Trails, Dinosaur History, and Small Town Charm. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, the ups and downs of spring, really the best way to describe the next couple of weeks. We certainly have had a big up here with the big warm up over the weekend that will continue here into the beginning of the week as temperatures are going to be warmer but also getting a little bit windy. We'll talk about that here in a minute. We're also going to see the warmth be replaced by a much cooler unsettled weather pattern by midweek. We're going to see some high elevation snow, rain and wind and some showers and thunderstorms across the lower elevations with the first system that will really be noticeably felt, at least in the central and northern Rockies and Plains as we get into between late Tuesday night through Thursday. It's already a system that's gonna be affecting folks along the west coast. The second half of the week behind the system will be cooler, unsettled, scattered shower and thunderstorm activity. Then another system approaches over the weekend, especially late in the weekend. As we get into next Sunday and into Monday, another Pacific trough will come through the west, taking a track somewhat similar to the first one. So that's going to really focus what is going to be about a seven day period or a little bit longer than that of what will be significant moisture for some areas. And I'll show you where with that next storm system coming late in the weekend and into early next week, that's going to keep things unsettled. Beautiful shot here from Owens Valley, California. Now this is right before the wind and the clouds came in with the approaching West Coast storm system. And just a lot of beautiful shots here, just classic spring. Tons of photos coming in over the weekend of snow-capped mountain peaks, greening conditions down low, and got several photos here of the runoff. Irrigation canals filling up with water there in Fremont County. The Little Laramie River starting to get a lot of snow melt, uh, which is a already occurred down low, but now really accelerating up high. And here's a video here out of Teton Valley, Idaho, of the runoff really accelerating with that big warm up that we had coming here over the weekend. We also saw a little bit of moisture come in to produce some afternoon showers and thunderstorms. We had a little bit of activity Saturday, but boy, it really picked up Sunday in some areas. But as you'll see from these photos, we had a uh, we had what we needed aloft. We had what we needed with some strong daytime heating, but we were really lacking moisture in some areas. So the thunderstorms had a much bigger bark than they did of a bite. We saw some really good cloud buildup, but the rain that came out of those showers and thunderstorms, this really didn't amount to too much. But we did see some instability that you get this time of year. Here's a great shot. Uh, another classic shot of the Cheyenne rain hole here. We had a really good updraft. You see these, these scalloped edges to the clouds here? This means the air is rising in the base of the shower and the thunderstorm. And usually when you get a good updraft like this, you're going to start to produce a rain shaft, which it did here. But if you look really closely, well, it was a lot of it was verga or sprinkles, just not being able to reach the ground. And we had a lot of that from Deaver, Wyoming, up in northwestern Wyoming to what we saw in southeastern Wyoming to Platte County there. We saw a lot of good cloud buildup, but we just couldn't get much rain out of those clouds. Hopefully that's going to change here later in the week. Nice shot of some Mammatus clouds just east of the Laramie Range. Nice shot there out of Laramie. Then another Cheyenne shot of rain trying to get going, but having a hard time doing it. We also saw the cloud build up really extend really across a lot of the geographic area all across the Intermountain West. We're going to see a shot like this today, especially along in west of the divide as this west coast trough begins to move in and high level clouds creating some halo effects there. Nice moonrise over Pathfinder Reservoir this past weekend. Now, as we take a look to end the photos, beautiful sunset there in Pinedale. Wow, there's a spring shot for you. A lot of snow still on the mountains, but spring-like looking clouds. The satellite photos and the surface weather charts this morning will highlight very easily all the high pressure that's 
in right here, and then the next low coming into Washington and Oregon. Stationary boundaries here in the east will keep a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity going, while the central and the western United States will enjoy high pressure, some high and mid-level clouds. You can see the swirl of clouds right here off the coast of northern California and Oregon. And you can see that by noon today, the low begins to move, starts to move inland, and we start to see a southwest flow here, which is we, what we had over the weekend, continuing for another couple of days, pumping in that warmth. By tomorrow and into Wednesday, it moves a lot more quickly now. So by Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, the upper level low will be over Yellowstone Park, bringing showers, thunderstorms, rain, snow, and wind along and near the path of this low. And then by Thursday noon, it's going to be up across the Dakotas. So you can see that the path is going to favor the northern areas because the best precipitation will be to the northeast, north, and northwest of the low. And when we look at the precipitation, you'll see that here in a minute. We had a lot of wind over the weekend, especially back here. And we're going to have a lot of wind today, tonight, and into tomorrow. So western Colorado, Utah, Arizona, back across all of the Great Basin states here, plenty windy. So if you're driving along Interstate 80 across the basin, you're, you're going to have a lot of wind. A lot of wind in the Four Corners area, very windy down into New Mexico. Winds developing out here across the northern plains. So the wind is going to be a factor today and tomorrow as this low comes on in. Now, between now and Friday, with this low pressure system coming in, you can see all the rain with those stationary boundaries and the stuck upper level low in the southeast, more rain needed for Florida. Look at the rain here across the eastern Dakotas into northeastern Nebraska. Pretty impressive. Going to see a good rain with this system coming in this week. We also have this other area of significant moisture that'll get the Beartooth, parts of Yellowstone, the Bighorns, the north, central, and northwest counties of Wyoming, many areas of Montana will do quite well. Have a little bit of a rain shadow here uh, as the system gets better organized, so there won't be as much in the western Dakotas or eastern areas of Montana, but there's going to be some. On the back side and the bottom of the trough, there will be some showers and thunderstorms across northern Colorado and southern Wyoming as the system pulls through midweek, and that's what's going to help form some better rain chances there in central Nebraska. But you can see along and south of Interstate 70, which was the area that was the wettest a week ago, well, things have now shifted more north. So this is the first system, and it is going to produce enough cold, as you'll see here in a moment, when we take the same photo I just showed you there and zoom in to the western United States, it's going to be cold enough that higher elevations will get some snow. You can see, again, the Beartooth Mountains, southwest Montana Mountains, and Wyoming's northwest mountains, and the Bighorns, going to continue to see more spring snows. Then by the time we get into the weekend, here's the next low. Now, initially, this next low is going to dig all the way down here to the Four Corners, then it's going to rock it back up to the northeast again, the way it looks. So it's going to come through, take a little bit more of a dip south before curving to the north and east. So it's basically going to cover the same turf as the system that's coming through here at the middle of the week. So there are two systems back to back that are going to really impact the region. So this is by a week from today. So it's not going to move as quickly. It is going to be a little bit more south but the jet stream energy will take it up to the northern plains. So there's a real possibility for you folks in, in Montana, the Dakotas, northern Wyoming, parts of Nebraska that could see over the next seven, eight days, some really good moisture amounts. We'll find out more as we get a little bit closer, especially with that second storm for the weekend. So it's going to be an up and down week ahead. Have yourself a good Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.